This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this week's episode, he's back looking at some of the modded weaponry, this time the mod guns of Fallout 4. Right, what have we got here? The buttstock is the real problem here, needless to say. It is a boot. It's not even a shoe, as the name would suggest, so the name is incorrect. If you want to see more of Jonathan reacting to Fallout Guns, make sure to subscribe as we've got three previous videos on Bethesda's iconic franchise. And for something a little bit different, in a future video we'll have David Rawlings, a sword master of over 25 years, breaking down some of the weapons of Elden Ring. If you use a hammer like this, I'd suggest that you're probably not going to have an intact back to make it up the stairs. Right, over to Jonathan. Strong want to kill something! So many humans, not many super mutants. Wow, interesting design. Very Fallout appropriate. There's very little, I can't see anything that is an existing firearm part. This looks like something that's been invented from scratch, which is nice. This isn't Star Wars, so stuff that you know, stuff that's meant to have existed in the timeline that isn't from our universe shouldn't really incorporate recognizable firearm assemblies. But I like this, it's got a it's got a sort of ray gun aesthetic, but also there's a heat shield in there, there's a conventional iron sight and a gas piston arrangement. I like the look of this, let's see how it plays. Okay, so the gameplay lives up to the name. This says it's a gyrojet system, this being the original gyrojet, or the pistol anyway, there is a, a carbine version with a, it's basically the same thing with a long barrel and a buttstock assembly on it. So this is a 1960s concept for a very sort of cheap, lightweight rocket gun. <laughs> so very simple design with a forward hammer that drops to the rear, strikes the the round on the nose to initiate the rocket motor inside and then the rocket ex accelerates back over the hammer to recock it and out the barrel. So this this is like a concept for what would happen if this hadn't been an abject failure and had been developed into not only a successful pistol, but presumably a rifle and what they're calling here a heavy machine gun. Now looking at the caliber of the ammunition they're depicting here, that seems fair. That is at least a 50 caliber diameter projectile. The rounds are not conventional cased rounds as they shouldn't be. They should be their own self-contained propellant with vents in the back. The only thing that's not really clear from this is how it feeds from the magazine because that little mini rocket thing is thoroughly embedded in that mag and I can't see how it would line up with the feedway to then be initiated by the striker or the hammer depending on what's inside. Right, so it isn't just a cosmetic skin for the ammunition. These are actually modeled as miniature rockets with fold-out fins, such as we do see on larger rockets. The gyrojet ammo didn't have folding fins. It relied on rotational stability from the vents at the back. This looks like uh, so some of the um, single-use rocket, or well, uh, guided missile systems have that style of folding fin that fold out to give you that stability. And we can actually see the rocket exhaust on this thing as well. And as they travel through the air, we see a smoke trail, which we would see and do see. If you watch footage of a gyrojet being shot, you'll see the little tiny rockets trailing a trail. <laughs> Oh, pause there. That's not cricket, is it? Anti-material rifle up the bottom is uh, decidedly unsportsmanlike behaviour. Now, as to the weapon, this is kind of exactly what I expect to see in a Fallout game, whether whether uh, modded or not. So this is an improvised type rifle that has been improvised digitally. We, we see this kind of thing in real life conflict zones today. Not usually as fully improvised as this. They're normally modified from existing cannon barrels. This has more of the air of scratch built, which is a little dicey with a cartridge as powerful as 50 BMG or 12.7 by 108. There's a lot of pressure contained in there. Those of you who've seen the now infamous Kentucky Ballistics video will be very familiar with what happens with a round of that power capability because normal 50 caliber rounds 
shouldn't do that to a rifle. But there is enough room in that case, more than enough room in that case, to generate extremely high levels of pressure. Okay, I'm seeing a couple of things here, one of which is a problem, the other one less so. Firstly, there's a big coil spring behind the bolt. It's probably meant to be part of the firing mechanism. It's very big and would be excessively powerful for that, for that purpose. It's certainly not for a return spring because the thing is bolt action. Bigger issue is there doesn't appear to be enough clearance for a complete round to actually fit in through the ejection opening in order to be chambered. The round appears to be longer than the ejection port and I think clips through the gun. Limitation of, the, of the, the, the graphics and the fact that this is a mod, presumably. I suppose the other things with this are ergonomics, within which I will include recoil. The standard Fallout rifle pose is a bit close in for a rifle as long and heavy as this. You would, you would really struggle, unless you were incredibly built, <laughs> to, to keep that on target. So at the very least, you'd want an arm further out along the barrel. The buttstock appears to be improvised from, from a bike seat or something. Matters more what's behind the padding of the seat. You know, is it attached to a buffer assembly of some sort that, that soaks up some of the recoil? Or is it literally just a bike seat welded to the back of the gun? In which case, it's not going to be great. It, it will get, have some give to it. Much more important to the felt recoil is that muzzle brake which it does have. So if that's correctly engineered, that will remove quite a lot of the felt recoil. It's also not really clear what the bolt handle is locking into or why that would be necessary, actually, come to think of it. It doesn't have the, the natural slot in the receiver of a bolt action rifle. It just has a massive, great open ejection port and kind of invisible locking at the front and also at the rear, weirdly. Overall though, I like the design. If, if I'm gonna mod Fallout, which I don't, <laughs> I would much prefer something that looks like it came straight out of the game and this absolutely does look like it could have, could have come with the game. Just comment on the on the overall aesthetics here. This does have the random strap around the grip for no reason thing, so that's a minus one from me. <laughs> However, it's got skulls on it, so automatically it's uh, elevated for me. The general sort of okay, the barrel shroud thing is kind of pointless, but it is cool, and I, I like the decoration. I'm not sure what's going on with the double triggers. They don't look to have. I'm guessing they're actually side by side, and I'm just seeing them in profile. Very piratical looking take on a very short side-by-side -side double barrel shotgun. I don't know what the cylinder under the barrel is supposed to be or do. Slightly unfortunate configuration of the screw in the butt and the sort of skull breaker beak is that it looks like a dead pigeon because it's got the, cross, the cartoon cross in the eye and then I, I'm reading too much into it. Moving on. <laughs> There is in fact a slight drawback to this decorative barrel shroud, which by the way I don't think has any precedent in history, for obvious reasons. It would add weight, cost, doesn't add any functionality. In fact it would make loading and unloading more difficult because you can't as easily access the breaches. But that's okay in, in the game because the reload is fairly fudged anyway. There's no way for them, for them to depict extractors and ejectors of any kind on any weapon, as far as I know, so not like it matters. I'm, oh, I'm kind of surprised that this thing has sights on it. Quite serviceable sight. I mean, the, the rear sight would be too easily damaged. That's one thing I will say. Right, what have we got here? An M1 or M1A1 Thompson with jungle mags. That's the least of this thing's problems. We've got a really weird... Well, it's not that weird. Okay, so the, let, let's be kind. So the, <laughs> the foregrip, the wooden foregrip of the Thompson has been replaced with a sheet steel heat shield slash handguard that's perforated. That's a valid choice in, in a world of limited resources. The buttstock is the real problem here, needless to say. It is a boot. It's not even a shoe, as the name would suggest, so the name is incorrect. I don't know why you would do that. Okay, let, let's be, let's be uh, charitable. So it's the Apocalypse 
You've got the ability to fabricate some sort of a buttstock for this thing, but it's not comfortable. You've got no available rubber blocks or ability to stitch leather. So for a butt pad, you just stick a boot on the end of it. What's really throwing me off and making my brain hurt is what appears to be a sliding left side cocking handle. This being the simplified version of the Thompson, it should have a right side cocking handle with a simple round handle like you've all seen. It shouldn't be on the left side and it shouldn't be a weird rectangular shape. That looks very familiar, but I can't think what it might be from. And it's called the Shoe Mac Uzi 9. Well, it's not nine millimeter, it's 45, even in the game. So I don't know where the nine comes from. Don't know where the Uzi comes in. I don't know, because there's no Uzi on this. So this one I've been waiting for. In fact, I was keen to see it. The EM2. Now, this is a really good effort, but inevitably there are gonna be a few issues with it. It's been modeled and textured from available images online, and there isn't full coverage of the EM2 available. And frankly, unless you get hands on something, it's, it's very, very hard to get it exactly right. And that's true of AAA developers, Never mind people making mods. So I guess the first thing to say is rifle number nine mark one. Yes, that's what the EM2 was adopted as in 1951, but none were actually produced to that specification, which is almost the same as this with a different hand grip. The mod is, is based upon this version, which is an early attempt that would have been replaced by a, a more sort of blended look. The, Game version has a sort of almost tapered look to it. It should be oval and it should be relieved around the barrel, i.e. there should be a big gap because barrels get hot and you don't want to burn your woodwork. Um, this one has the barrel emerging straight out of the woodwork pretty much. The only other external major difference of rifle number nine, because we have the drawings for that, would have been, with a few, a few minor changes, but the only real glaring one other than this would be this bit. This is called the barrel cover. It's literally a bit of sheet steel that covers the breech area of the barrel, hence its name. And this version is the version that's modeled, sort of a cone and then a straight bit. Well, rifle number nine had a much more streamlined cover on it. But I suppose the point, the point stands that rifle number nine is, is a specific variant of EM2. That's not rifle number nine, and this isn't rifle number nine. But overall, this is, this is a really nice effort. They've done a hell of a job from photos. And it's just nice to see EM2 in a game. Pretty impressive reload there, using the right hand, which is what the trials manual actually does say that you, you should do. They've done a great job adapting the, adapting the game engine to this rifle. It, it's basically as you would do it, not per the drills necessarily, but as, as you could do it, put it that way. Right, the optic should not be magnified. This sight, the unit sight, it is not a telescopic sight, but the standard sight is really just a way to get around the very short sight radius of a bullpup. So bullpups place your trigger and pistol grip up here, bringing the long, long barrel back into the gun and making the whole gun a lot shorter. That means that your sight radius so the distance between the front and the rear sight inevitably gets super short. You can see how short because of the backup sights, which are seen deployed in the mod. So flipped up at the front, that then gives you a rear aperture here. It has the optical sight purely as a replacement for a conventional rifle sight. So this is better thought of as an aperture sight than it is an optical sight, even though it's technically an optical. Yeah, this is a really strange one. Very interesting aesthetic to it. It's a gigantic revolver rifle, revolving rifle. Apparently in 50 BMG, but the center round is huge, even huger 
than 50 BMG. I don't know what that's meant to be. Uh, and they all appear to function the same way. So we get 10 shots, but one's massive and comes out of the middle. So this thing has two barrels. It's almost, I think it's probably a Lamat revolver inspired. There's a centerfire version of the Lamat revolver, which has a shotgun in the middle. So on the face of it, I'd say maybe that's a 10 gauge shotgun round in the middle, but I don't think the sizes match up. The other thing about the Lamat with its central shotgun barrel is that the ha it requires, both versions of, of the gun require a pivoting nose to the hammer so that you can switch between your outer ring of conventional cartridges and your center shot for the shotgun. There look to be two firing pins modeled on the gun, but I'm not seeing any switchable hammer and the hammer doesn't always seem to be operating. Very unique looking gun, calling back to one of the most unique looking handguns in history. I like this improvised, any improvised firearm or craft produced firearm is going to look appropriate in the Fallout world and this thing absolutely does. It's a real mishmash of stuff. For once I'm going to complain about the lack of tape on the grip because there's one piece of blue tape wrapped around there that is nowhere near enough to actually make that comfortable. You would want to, if you were trying to use this for real and I've seen it done, you would want to wrap tape around till you ran out of tape so that you had something vaguely comfortable to grip. Let's see if this might actually work. There's a great big bolt underneath that's acting as some sort of retainer for the cylinder, I think, although, hmm, let's have a look. Right, on the face of it, I think this thing could work. It's single action, it's got a great big hammer that's cocked between shots, it's got Cutouts on the cylinder for the cylinder stop that stop stop literally stops it in, in alignment with the next round. The only bit it's that I can't evaluate that presumably is there is a ratchet on the back of the cylinder. Those angled cuts that allow the hand or the pawl of the revolver to usually push up and rotate it to the next position so that the stop can stop it. If that makes sense. The problem for you as the designer and maker of this thing would be coming up with the mechanism to make that work. But hey, we have flintlock revolvers from about 1680 that do this. And they were made by hand by clever people. Okay, so the big long bolt underneath supports the, I guess, the barrel extension, you might call it. Um, it doesn't have a barrel, but it's the plate at the front. It allows that to be in place. Presumably the barrel could be fitted. It also acts as the pivot for a swing out cylinder. I'm starting to suspect this is a real design that someone has modeled into the game, but that's that's quite an ingenious, simple way to, to implement a swing out cylinder because otherwise you've got a, quite a complicated crane slash yoke arrangement built into the frame. It's quite difficult to pull off. One that simply pivots around a massive bolt. Yeah, that could work. Right, so we have a very handy demonstration there of the difference in accuracy between this thing without a barrel fitted to it and with. So the first group, pretty reasonable. At this distance, that would be quite embarrassing for any for any side arm, any handgun. But um, nonetheless, without the barrel, it's a lot worse and it really is like side of a barn. It's what, three or four times the, si the group size there. I don't think at this range it would make that much difference, to be quite honest. I mean, you're not, assuming the barrel is rifled, you're getting stabilization that you would not be getting at all without a barrel. You are also getting a slight increase of pressure with, with the barrel and gases building up behind it, increasing velocity, making for a flatter trajectory. But at this very short distance, like simulated 10 meters or less, I think all you'd see is bullets striking sideways from the lack of stabilization without the barrel. And the group size would probably be about the size of the first one, maybe, for both of them. I don't know, your mileage may vary. This thing is made from bits of metal. Yeah, 
Yeah. Okay, so our good old friend the broom handle. Various modifications here. The barrel has been made pencil thin with inexplicable radial cuts all along it. I would not trust that. Certainly not with 763 Mauser, which is quite a powerful, relatively powerful round. This is apparently 10 millimeters. Um, good luck getting a 10 millimeter diameter bullet out of that very tiny barrel. A very thin low volume suppressor that I don't imagine would do very much if it didn't blow off the end of the gun instantly and what looks like a 762 Tokarev mini SMG magazine detachable. At least the magazine well looks to have been enlarged to accommodate it and they do at least appear to have enlarged the frame to accommodate the, the detachable magazine which Mauser had to do for real with the Schnell foyer machine pistol which also incorporated a detachable magazine. Remember the original Mauser C96 was loaded only from top. So this is this has turned uh, an iconic firearm into something of a cursed one. What is this? This looks like a mildly cursed M16A4. There's a weird attachment on the bottom of the handguard. Proportions of the carrying handle are off. Somehow the buttstock looks too low. I might be reading too much into this. And then there's a really weird extended charging handle that I'm, I would say I'm keen to see how it works, but let's see. And it's called the M2216. Play on the M16, I guess. I think I get this. So all of the changes, including the ludicrous charging handle extension, appear to have been done to make Fallout 4's reloading animations and, and grasping animations, I suppose, work with an M16A4. Um, and the same presumably applies to that slightly distorted carry handle sight arrangement as well, in order to get the sights to line up behind the player character's eye, I would guess. So the hand grip alteration is so that there's something, so that the gun isn't floating in midair. The cocking handle extension is so that the character is cocking it in a way that makes any kind of sense. And I think the altered rear sight is also to do with engine limitations, which explains why this is otherwise a nicely faithful rendition of an M16A4. Somewhat compromised by, well, the compromises. I want to give some context to this one. Do you remember when we did the Fallout 4 base game. Yeah. There was the assault rifle, which was a mishmash of Lewis gun and M249. It was horrible. Yeah. This is an effort that someone's made to redesign the Fallout 4 assault rifle into something that makes better use of those parts and angles and okay. create something a little less cursed. Yeah. Hmm, what I think we have here, although my memory of the automatic rifle thing from, from Fallout 4 is, is thankfully quite dim, is actually a, a mod uncursing a gun to some extent. It's an alternate 1950s-ish LMG with, with a drum slash belt box feed. It, it makes much more sense than the original gun from the game. The only thing wrong with this now, I think, is probably the case ejection, which is a very minor thing to pick up, but uh, that, that's what I do. Somehow the, the, um, the spent cases are ejecting like, out to the side slightly and then immediately straight up in the air. Um, I don't know if there's meant to be a deflector, but there's nothing there that would cause that effect. That might be a limitation of the gun it's modded from, thinking about it. But yeah, I like, I like the overall look. It's a chunkier wooden furniture take on an FN machine gun. Now, I just wanted to say thanks and a special shout out to Joe. Joe, I gather from your dad that you've been inspired to a possible future career by watching our videos. I can't tell you how pleased and excited that makes me. That's why we do what we do. So I wish you all the best in your future career, whatever, whatever it is that you, you decide that you want to do. And uh, thank you for watching and keep watching. Take care.